It's ten o'clock and writer's block is thriving, driving me to drink. I'm looking out the window, cutting off my hair into the sink. Exotic cats just sitting, grinning, winning life at my expense. And yet I duplicate that trait of lack of needing to make sense. Fur Trade's new album, Dark Celebration, is out now. And joining me in this video are the bands Steve Bays and Parker Bosley, both known for their work with Hot Hot Heat. We'll take a dive into the album, chat about video games, and share some of this year's best music. So stay tuned. What's up? Hey. Is this your studio, Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's kind of crap all over the place right now, but so this is sort of wow. the vibe. Um, just kind of, and then there's, there's a, uh, there's other rooms too, but this is like the main control room where we're, where we spend most of our. Time. So crazy to see like this. So when did you start making this studio? Um, this studio is about five years old, I guess now, and it's the third, sort of fourth version of Tugboat. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, basically, I just spent seven months um, working on it with this fella and a crew of people. There's so many details that go into doing it right because it's a room within a room, like the walls are about this thick and all the wires are running like through the floors and the floor weighs 2000 pounds and is on vibrating pucks. Um, and then there's a drum room upstairs. Vi vibrating hockey pucks, actually. Yeah, it's, it, it's like a Canadian touch. So you mentioned that the studio is in your backyard. Do you find that mm -hmm. difficult to separate from home life? I remember when I first was talking about wanting to do this, another producer was like, well, Dr. Dre spent millions on his home studio only to find out that that he like he needs the separation and he can't be creative if it's like at like at his house or whatever. Um, I was like, oh, I hope that doesn't happen to me, but it doesn't at all. Also, I think it does help that it's a, at least a separate building yeah because like i think it would be different if it was like in your basement you yeah. might feel a little weirder about it but it's like you you have to like walk through like a path come to a completely separate building and enter it and then yeah, you're yeah. like in here yeah so it does feel like there's like almost the perfect amount of separation i feel yeah i guess it's similar to like going to the gym if you have a home gym you're less likely to use it but if you're designating uh, home box. <laughs> I, I I bought a I bought a home gym about three years ago. I should be able to do everything for me, or I should be able to do everything <laughs> yeah. on it. I've used it four times in three years, like yeah. literally not yeah. exactly. I can do the home studio thing, but I I can't do the home gym thing. Yeah, because you're you're probably thinking, oh, I'm wasting my time doing this when I could be working on music. Like anytime I like I have the energy to go for a jog or to like do some form of exercise, I'm like, oh, but with this energy, I could be capitalizing on, you know, yeah, any number of creative things. I, I come from the like the Stephen King model of working out, which is like I like to like go for a three hour hike and like compose mm. thoughts in my head and then come home and and write them down and i i mean a lot of this record i was jogging for it's only in the last little while i've really gone to shit, but um <laughs> but i want to get back into it um but yeah so many great song ideas came while jogging um and for years that was kind of my mantra which i borrowed from oxley workman who borrowed it from bob marley which is the, before every rehearsal they would all go for a big long run and as a band. Bringing it back to Hot Hot Heat, it was 2008 when Parker joined. How did that happen? There was a pub outside of my studio at the time then um, called Pub 340. And it was just like kind of the scummiest, crappiest bar around. Maybe not I the worst. It. I missed it. Though. But it was pretty. It was <laughs> for those, those in the Oh, those who those who loved it loved it and there, listen. There, like there's cool dive bars and then there's just crap bars like gross bars yeah. yeah this was just a crap bar but i just remember there was a show there and i think i went to go check out the band and i was just outside and there was probably like 50 people like right in front of the venue just all smoking and stuff 
And I just like, as I walked by this group of people, I just felt Parker like just grab my ass and go, Stevie! <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, like. Luke, Luke saw a show. Uh, he saw me play with a band called Fake Shark Real Zombie that I was playing in at the time. Luke was like, you should join Hot Out Heat. And then oh, wow. we like jammed. Yeah. And it went pretty well. I mean, yeah. It was like we all gelled kind of instantly i felt um so we were like oh let's just get him to play all the bass on the record so it feels like he's playing songs that he was a part of you know? i definitely had ideas that i was bringing that, oh yeah that oh yeah it wasn't just like it wasn't recorded. just like let's throw the guy a bone. <laughs> <laughs> like it was definitely that the songs were better with you on them for sure yeah but that's obvious yeah so it was around that time when Parker joined that I discovered Hot Hot Heat, and that was through a game called Saints Row. I know that we're in it. For whatever reason, I just never played it. Like, I love Grand Theft Auto stuff from around that time and, like, the original Red Dead Redemption, but I never got into Saints Row. I know, even on YouTube, there's tons of people that were like, I found out about them through Saints yeah. Row. We did a kid show once that our manager was like, oh, no, don't do it because they don't pay you anything and like you don't get any royalties or something like that. I was like, I don't care. Dance, cause it's time to go outdoors with hot, hot heat. I just want to be a part of pop culture. I love being featured in video games and movies. I just, I think it's such a cool thing to look back at as you get older, you know? Um, and that kid's show was like, wasn't it Gabba Gabba Hey or whatever? <laughs> Yo Gabba like, Gabba. Yeah, like the dopest kid's show of all time. So. Like, I, there's probably more people that discovered us from that show than anything else. Our, I got it like in an argument with our manager because uh, he passed on some movie that wanted to use a song of ours. There was basically like no budget. Um, and I was just like super pissed because I was like, I don't pass on stuff just because they don't have money. Like it's rad to be in indie films. Like that's sick. Um, it's like, oh, go, oh, go, go. Like, sometimes the people that you, you work with on the business side, forget that the artists that they manage are still little kids that are just tripping out that their songs in a video game, you know, like mm. I still, even at my age, like get so excited at, at the thought of a song being in a, in a, like an indie film or any size film really i, I sent him actually i sent him the whole fur trade record i was like as an apology i was like well if if you can't get the rights to hot i eat use some fur trade so we'll see <laughs> cool and i definitely feel like grand theft auto and games like that shaped my music taste yeah and your song was definitely the standout song in saints row which, oh, which song which song was that yeah i don't even know let me in so oh yeah, yeah. It's okay. yeah. 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 that's a bang for me, I remember Tony Hawk, like one and two. Six soundtracks. That was that was such like introduced me to like the Buzzcocks and like so many cool bands. Um, and then from that point on, I was like, oh man, that's the future of, of video games. Cause up till then it was like, you know, cool borders and stuff would just have this random just like yeah, whack like hip hop song that's on loop for every single yeah like not yeah, even yeah, hip-hop yeah, yeah. like it it just felt like some dude that was maybe a hired guitar player in a hair metal band oh, in the it was 80s. like shred shred what, stuff yeah it was just was hired by some company to whip out you know 20 right. songs in three days the the first game that i ever played that actually had music like that in it was a game called road rash 3d for playstation one yeah. And it randomly had a bunch of kid rock songs on it. Oh, sick. and that started my non-ironic uh, love for kid rock's music. I, I actually kind of like that early stuff. It's that's why sick. you're a hardcore Republican. <laughs> no, <laughs> strike the record. But I think that was the first game that actually did that, where it was like a radio station. When when Hot Eight Heat first, we did our first Europe tour. We had the worst insomnia just because of the time difference. It was an eight hour difference. The day we landed, we started the tour, played our first show like that, that same day. And it was just like, oh my God, how are we going to get through this? And I, I had the worst insomnia of everyone. Anyway, the bus came was a PlayStation 2, I think, and it had Tiger Woods Golf on it. Nice. And I swear I have every song on that game memorized from really? that tour. That's yeah. Cool. Like that was Billy Talent, the when Try Honesty was on that. On the Tiger Woods golfing yeah, game? Yeah, and I was just Whoa. like forever 
they went from just being some random band that I might have heard on the radio at some point to like ingrained in my soul. Right. Wow. Do you guys still play video games today? Yeah, I do. I've got a Switch. I I really like playing RPGs, and I really like the music out of like like the Zelda games. Like Link to the Past is like probably my favorite game. That and Earthbound. Um, I bought Red Dead Redemption Two when it came out, and it was just so. It was just so much to learn and get into that I would. Mm. I think that turned me off of video games because for years I was googling when does red dead redemption 2 come out because i love that was sort of my last game was that right. i loved years ago was red dead redemption and then it finally came out i was so excited and i was like man i don't know why i just don't have the willpower to collect berries and blend them and make yeah yeah you, you know the, healing when the learning like, curve is that intense that's why i like the like SNES, 8-bit, or whatever they would be. Oh, yeah, what is SNES? Would just probably like be basic, 16. basic as fuck RPGs yeah. is my jam. I just want to walk I, around and talk to you. I definitely love Red Dead Redemption 2. That's one of my favorite games, and the original. It's probably yeah. sick. If, if I could get into it, I'd be so into it. Yeah. But um, it's, it's like that first week. Having said that, though, I did, I bought a, the Oculus Quest 2. Because I was, from a young age, was obsessed with the concept of virtual reality, and it never delivered. I was like, okay, finally, like they've mm. they've got good VR for consumer, you know, pricing or whatever. And so I was like, I'm going to take a risk on it. And the only game I got into on it was a mini golf game, but it was golfing again. And Billy Talent was the soundtrack. Weird. It's so weird. Like I'm not like a golf guy. Like, I don't even like golf. It was my entire life for about three weeks. And then, um, sick. And so you're good oh, at wait. it. And there was one other game, uh, Sunrise, something, it's a zombie game, something Sunrise, um, Arizona Sunrise. That was a phenomenal game. In VR, when you have zombies coming at you, it's just like, okay, like I'm living in the future. This is amazing. Yeah, it sounds kind of creepy. But then I just was over it and it's just been collecting dust. And I, I never think to play video games, sadly, anymore. Do you stay in touch with other members of Hot Hot Heat still? Yeah, texting with Paul a bunch today, mainly about how pissed off we were. <laughs> but I text with Dante a bit, text with Luke a bit, occasionally with Dustin over like email and text, but um, I haven't seen Dustin in a long time. With Future Breeds, it's gone from streaming in my country. That might just be an australian thing no, but i'm just head, touching the head of the label um right yeah, now it'll get it's fixed it's <laughs> been like that for years and for I, years yeah i like having the vinyl because it's like no one can take that from me got it <laughs> thanks for telling me thank you for that if it if it show if it shows up on, on spotify um then it's because of you so the latest uh hot hot heat record did you go into that record with the idea that this would be the final one? We did two versions. We did one version of the record um, at my studio, kind of put it on pause because there was just like a lot of tension in the band. We've been doing this Hot Out Heat thing nonstop for so many years and it was just, something just fell off. So we put it on pause and then I did the Mounties record with um, my Mounties bandmate, Ryan Dahl. And it was such a fun record the way we did it. We just had a everything in a in a huge room everything was mic'd up and we just played everything live um and did it very differently than doing it sort of bit by bit the way we had been doing the first version of the album in my studio yeah so it was just all of us in a room it together was fun. it was so nice and just awesome. like because like it's easy to forget like how talented like like paul is as a drummer and mm -hmm. just like when you're like in the room and we were we were doing full takes as band as a band um and it's like not a lot not every, not every band can actually do that and make it great and like pull it off um yeah so it was just fun it was a pleasure to like be in the room and just like yeah rocking these tunes you know at that point i should say we knew that it was going to be the last record um so yeah it was kind of a sentimental feeling and i was like okay this is probably the last time i'll hear everyone playing together final song on the album definitely feels like of a send-off for the band 
Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that was that we we wrote that on the spot that, that, that just happened. yeah that, that one was just the the ones i was it the one song on the, that I, had zero prep we were just yeah. jam we jammed that one and it was basically done yeah in like five minutes we we're like oh shit is that the final song, song of the record yeah. randomly memories here won't fade away memories here it won't fade away Magnitude is my favorite song off that record for sure. Yeah, I yeah, think mine as well. That, that's like one of your greatest piano moments ever. I would just, I would always, I would always play that. Um, there was a piano in the next room because that studio was just in an office building. And um, this director guy, Chris Haddock, just let me temporarily put my build my studio there. And he had just like a jazz bass and a piano for show in his office and i just would always play that riff and then it, i was like i gotta use that that riff somehow like it's still it still holds up like it's the, it's the cutest one. That's so nice. <laughs> um, that uh, that piano is really out of tune. I just realized. What was the sort of reason, if you can say, for why Hot Hot Heat came to an end? So much of Hot Hot Heat was just built on enthusiasm and excitement, and just always felt like lightning in a bottle it, it felt like okay now all of a sudden it's feeling like work i the, the motivation isn't just naturally flowing um and for me like it's so hard to do a good job unless i'm stoked and excited and feel yeah. like a big kid so um uh and when you kind of build a an, a team like you, there's a bit of a machine kind of pushing you forward all the time it's just it's so scary when you can feel the machine pushing you forward, but um, but you're not excited or motivated, and that it's just the worst worst feeling. And I I feel like the personalities of everyone in the band, everyone is such a big personality and an A personality type that I'm kind of surprised we even stayed together as long as we did because there's just so much energy from everyone's personalities in the room all the time. In some ways, it is a miracle that Hot Hot Heat was able to like stay together as long as it did, because mm -hmm. most bands, even bands that get along, you know, you you lose that inspiration streak. You like you, you stop, you know, being inspired by the music you're making or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like right up until the end, there was inspiration, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, that record felt inspired. It felt good. Yeah. When we were cutting it. When you're in a band there's a lot of compromise and true. yeah and a lot of just being like well i i don't necessarily feel like being around other people right now but i i gotta be you know and do you feel like that translates to fur trade where you're basically a duo how does that dynamic work differently to hot hot heat I think just even the nature of there only being two people does kind of simplify things and make things easier a little bit in regards to just like a tactical manner it's like it's a lot easier to to align two psyches than to align four psyches personality wise i think steve and i complement each other quite well where it's like the things that he's good at i'm not as good at and the things that i'm good at He's maybe not as good at, and we balance each other out. And maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, I know. I knew it was gonna... you're gonna clap back on that one. But... Yeah, it's like we could stress about, um, like a font or something, or you know, a color for. And, and we do, we do a little bit. Like we put we put care TLC into everything. Right, but... we don't stress. We we do yeah. think about it though. But there's like there's always we 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 both have a similar instinct to where the threshold of 
lack of productivity begins. Right. Versus just in, intense scrutiny. Yeah. Like you can, yeah. there is a certain level of focusing the details that ends up essentially destroying future great ideas. You mentioned fighting over a font. I noticed the, the font in uh, the LOL Trash music video, LOL Trash. LOL Trash. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the font for that in the music video is quite a very specific font. Who comes up with those design decisions? That was Stevie. I, I came up with the idea. I was like, it should flash LOL Trash every time we say it on the video. And then Steve came up with that font. It was dope as hell. And we used it on the album artwork too. Yeah. Well, the single artwork, I should say. Yeah. I I have hundreds of gigs of sample libraries of just weird visual stuff that I co have collected over the years and continue to collect. Um, and I, so yeah, basically like I, at one point I remember five, I like, I'm really into animated fonts. So you have to put each letter on the screen, but they're like shaking and moving and they're like filmed through a CRT TV kind of thing. Like anything that adds that extra layer of pain in the ass, I'm like, that's one more thing that another band wouldn't be, couldn't be bothered to do. Right. right. Whereas I have the patience to do it. So I'm going to do that and just like give us one leg up. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for noticing. Who did the single artwork for that one? Parker had the idea of it being a flash tattoo sheet. Um, and, and I was like, I was like, I really want us to make like almost like an Olympic mascot for of like a cute trash can that's like taking its lid off, but it's full of like empty bottles and like cigarette butts and stuff. We got Drew to she drew that, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, there was sort of a, a tattoo thing just because we when we were shooting the LOL trash video, I met um, my now partner, Drew um and she tattoos for a living and um and then now she's tattooing out of the studio here um and yeah so there was like somehow that got tied into the the video in the back of our heads and then so parker's like let's do a, a flash sheet um and uh, then yeah i mean my vibe was just like work with what you got like it's mm. like it's like boom if we decide to go that route like we have someone who's dope as hell who can help us do it steve's been like looking at millions of tattoos lately because he was getting all these tattoos <laughs> and he was so geeked about it and then i was like and there's got to be a trash can that's like doing a cute thing and some of those tattoos in the artwork are tattoos that i've actually given myself because i've been learning how to tattoo so i've been just tattooing my legs um oh, wow. and so I, I, yeah, I, they I look they look surprisingly good he's he's got a knack for it do you have any tattoos parker i've got a couple i drew gave me one of this video game character from earthbound and then this uh rose that's about it i don't have much what's next for you steve i'm tattooing drew to tonight um it's my first time on her yeah i'm gonna tattoo Whoa, her. What are you uh, of your face on her i'm just i'm gonna just start drawing and see what happens just you're free free no no, no 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 i i'm not sure <laughs> it's up to her what i do okay. um and then yeah. she said she would give me one tonight but uh i gotta decide what it's gonna be i i usually decide like a couple seconds before i do it um, because if I think if I think about it too much, then I just there's a lot of rabbit holes you can go down. Once you realize your body is just a blank canvas waiting to be, you know, created upon, it just, it makes you realize how much real estate there is to play with. Steve specifically have more Christmas songs than anyone, uh, any band in similar scope to yourself. Um, oh, where does that come from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even like Christmas. If I'm asked to do something, I'm like, oh, an opportunity to justify being creative. It, it's yeah. hard to say no to something guaranteed. A label being, out. yeah, being like, because like for the Fur Trade song, like it wasn't our idea to do that song. The label was like, hey, we're doing Christmas thing. Do you want, do you guys want to do a song on it? But baby. come bring you home babe 
I said hell yes because I'm actually like yeah. I'm I listen to Christmas music all year around. Like I listen to Peanuts Christmas while I'm just driving through the park. Like I'm obsessed. <laughs> And so it was fun to finally apply that. What's Penis Christmas? Peanuts Christmas. <laughs> oh, like Charlie Brown. Ew. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fucking guy. And so it was so nice to like do it with a like-minded individual who's willing to really put in the work. Like we, we mm-hmm. worked really hard on that song. Like I'm really proud of it. Yeah, it's dope. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's got such a crazy energy to it. And the music video is like amazing. The Mounties Christmas song, that's probably one of my favorite. It's uh it's got such a chaotic uh, energy to it. Merry Christmas maybe, yeah. That that was um just a, a crazy a crazy night. Um and it just sort of presented itself. It just fell out. There was like no logic in the making of it. Um and we did that at Ryan Ryan's studio. That that was a weird one. That was super weird. Also, really, I like the hot at heat Christmas day in the sun. Still, um... and that one was the the guy that created the OC TV show. He asked us to perform on the show in the first episode. Uh, and I just like, oh, that sounds so cheesy. That's not a hot look like pass. And then so instead they got like the killers, the like the Walkmans. That like, was one time you should have listened to your manager. Maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then so and then I was like bummed that they got all these like huge indie bands to play on the show. And I was like, I I didn't know. I thought it was going to be just the wackest TV show. And, and um so and then i met someone on the street one night that was i was telling them about it and they're like oh i know josh schwartz i have his number right here i was like give it to me and i called the creator of the show and he picked up and i was like i'm an idiot i shouldn't have passed on that um can you put us on the show he's like oh we're not really doing the the live band thing anymore but we have a christmas episode coming up um like could you write a song like this week for it and record it and send it off um and then so yeah we just banged that out like super fast and i i still like it you released your initial fur trade songs and then there was a long hiatus the main thing was we were always working on fur trade over the course of all of that time always distractions like mounties was happening hot out heat happened my band gay 90s happened and then we're constantly producing and songwriting it was just like just mm. we never had time to be like okay we're going to devote the next 6 months to like finishing this you know And then that time kind of came where yeah. we both felt right. Like, it. okay, now's the time to pull the trigger, you know? Big priority was was just learning more. I just was obsessed with just getting better um, at the craft of engineering and mixing and stuff like that. Um, and I loved when we would get together for writing sessions, but... Um, I want, I really wanted to, to buy a place, um, where I could build this home studio. It was like a dream for me my whole life. Um, so I was just taking on a lot of gigs where I could, you know, work for other bands and chip away at a down payment for a house and the studio, um, while also being paid to learn. And we were working with the label that we signed to light organ. Um, I, you know, started working for them probably like at least 10 years ago um and i was doing so many things for other people's albums um that i was like why don't we just sign with light organ um because we know them they're they're here in town 
Yeah, and we like, trust them. They're they're already hiring us to work on their bands. Like, why don't we just why don't we just see if they want to put out our record? And mm -hmm. they're super stoked. But yeah, I I still am insecure enough that I wanted to feel like there was some enthusiasm behind it, and I just hated the feeling of sending it to people and not necessarily hearing back. It was like too sacred to me. So um, whereas Jonathan at Light Organ, I sent it to him and he just like flipped over it. So it's like, okay, boom, let's not waste another second. Let's start putting it mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we knew we had that destination, um, it can, it gave us justification to get yeah, together. Just that extra little spark to finish the record. And uh, yeah, I think that motivation will continue for us to keep creating, like we're making all, all the videos ourselves and we're working on the next record. Um, and eventually going to start performing. Yeah, building a live set. So. That's, I'm the most, I'm always the most nervous about that, but I'm always the most excited once, once I'm performing. It's like dope, but like the, the leap of like getting from where we are right now to on a stage just mm -hmm. feels like such a crazy, scary leap. And have you figured out how the songs will translate to live? We're we're, we're literally on. like on like the beginning stages of uh, yeah what we'll, it's gonna look like. We'll, we'll like. play those cards close to our chest for now. Yeah, we'll play them close. We'll keep them close to our no, chest. No, we're gonna play them. I'm gonna play solitaire on <laughs> the chest. Do you plan on touring around Canada to start with, or do you have any sort of? We're we're gonna start in Perth and then maybe go to. Brisbane. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, hopefully. I would love to tour Australia though, because yeah. they've always been the best shows. On YouTube, they're the easiest to find live performances off uh, in Sydney. That was the Mosh Cam. Yeah, I wish there was more footage. There used to be more footage online. But yeah, it's funny. You think the internet is forever, but then people eventually like delete their YouTube accounts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so not everything isn't forever on the internet. Yeah, shit goes missing, man. When streaming really first became popular of movies, gave every piece of physical media I owned uh, to a friend of mine. So I was like, it's all online. You don't need physical media anymore. And I gave him all these documentaries and stuff that I had collected like on the road. And um, yeah, you can't find most of those documentaries now. And I'm like, oh, there is no purpose to physically collecting when the apocalypse finally comes mm -hmm. the internet's probably going to crash anyways so it's you want at least a couple good physical you know copies of things that you like yeah i mean it's supposed to happen next week so yeah and you've got it covered <laughs> you've got three good records right yeah. there i'm stoked that you you have our record store day um uh single yeah because uh, you can't listen to this one anyway it's got sand on it now because i was down at the beach but you couldn't, uh, uh, what is it? Nature of Things, unreleased demo. You said that you recorded two versions of this album. Is there any sort mm -hmm. of chance of uh, an anniversary edition of this? For sure, yeah. I have I have so much unreleased Hot Heat stuff. It didn't make sense to put it out around the Makeup the Breakdown reissue, but because I just started collecting and like filming and recording so much more from like Elevator onwards. Yeah. Um, that when I was going through all like old hard drives and stuff, I realized I have so much stuff to release to people that would give a shit. <laughs> Happiness Limited, um, for example, I have like a hour long documentary that was filmed oh, wow. throughout the making of it. And I edited it together myself back in 2007. Um, and it's still entertaining to this day. And I, like, oh, I really want to just put it out now, but I'm like, I should probably wait a few years till the 20th anniversary of the record, but. Right. People definitely want to see that stuff. And The Strokes released a, a singles collection. It would be cool to see something similar. Yeah, I didn't, I don't even think I knew that they did that. Is that yeah. recent? Yeah, that's that only came out this year. Um, what did they title it? I'm always curious to know what people title their greatest hits. The Strokes, The Singles, Volume 1. So I guess maybe they plan on doing other volumes. Oh. Calling it The Singles is, is better than calling it Greatest Hits. 
Yeah. Because greatest hits implies that everything kind of had to go number one. Which... Well, and great's an adjective that I'm not particularly that fond of, to be honest. Right. I know that the Chili Peppers did a singles thing in like the 90s called What Hits. The Growl is uh, a Californian band released a, a collection called Greatest Shits. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. I, I, like, I like the Growlers. I just, I like anything extra because once i've finished listening to an album i just want to dive deeper and listen to as much as i can surrounding it so i'm like that with with the beatles for sure that's like of all the bands that i've like listened to every single bootleg and b-side of it would be the beatles for me yeah which is tough as a because they're like n there's no there's almost none of that it's so hard to find yeah i'm that's, like that's a I'm, joke i'm like that with succession I'm watching really? Just right now. Oh, how far in are you? The first season still. I finished White Lotus and then I was like looking for anything else that's sort of similar. And Nice. White, White Lotus is cool. Succession is just so fascinating. It's so thrilling. And like if, if you like the interest, intricacies of just personal politics and, and work politics too, but I don't know. It yeah i it's such a great show and i watched the first episode of season four it's like one of the few shows that i'm excited about um and i just immediately was watching like every interview i could find um and like listening to a pod the hbo podcast where they're interviewing the director and the writer and stuff <laughs> and i'm getting like little nugs of the most minute morsels of insight into the like the making of the show and i'm just so fascinated um is there a, a chance for a physical release of the new album oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's just not out yet yeah okay, but, wow. but, it, but it, you're saying when it comes out will will it, there be a physical 100 p there will I, I definitely so. be vinyl. oh yeah yeah absolutely because we're making vinyl tote bags currently yeah so i would be yeah there's got to be there will be vinyl and wow. they're labeled that like they like to do vinyl. Yeah. And it's better to just tell everyone that it's happening. So then the label has to, because we can point to this interview and be like, we already told everyone in Australia that it's happening. Yeah. So you can't say no. Yeah. That's, it's, that's a good way to run your business is just, and your life pressure people. Are there other music videos to come? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, one for Make It to the Morning. Uh, I mean, we'll that's the next one. They'll we'll probably do at least four, five or six. Five. Six. We've got a yeah. I feel like six is in the car. I mean, it'd be sick to do six. It just we're it, just gonna keep doing them until we can't do them anymore. Until the labels like stop making them, you know. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep going until <laughs> my fingers have slowly worn through the laptop, and it just like goes through right to the other side. Like whoa, I guess I yeah. <clears throat> Just literally, or, or until you're finally crushed by all of the camera gear, camera equipment. It finally just like somehow while you're yeah. sleeping, it all falls on you and just names you. I I built a camera rig for th this past week, um, and it was just too heavy. I had to strip it down and make it more manageable. It, it looks more manageable now. It was scared. We're looking at it right now. That's why we, <laughs> our eyes are yeah. hiding that way. But it was. It had like four separate monitors on it and like it was intimidating. hard drives and um like all these motors and mechanisms and and stuff and it was like my dream camera rig but then i was i used it i did it some test footage and within about one minute i was just like either i magically get a, i start using your gym yeah I was, either i start hitting i i have been thinking about hitting my home gym actually specifically just to hold the camera for longer periods. Right. Other bands that were similar in scope to Hot Hot Heat typically stay around that debut sound and they don't really venture out. I enjoyed how every time you came out with a new album, it was just completely tonally different. There was a concept, concept sort of behind each record. Like Make Up the Breakdown was definitely, we wanted to sound just like we were documenting a band's straight out of their jam spot you know just as is you know so there's there's me there's usually just one guitar at any at any given point there's 
usually just one keyboard. Um, of course, just one bass, one drum. Um, I, I don't even, I barely did any harmonies on that record. Like we just wanted it to sound like a live band. And then um, the second record, Elevator, we, it, the concept was we want to finally record in a crazy studio with a big, you know, amazing engineers and a big producer, blah, blah, blah. Like we wanted to just flex that muscle of having the recording budget, um, but but not do it in a s slick, not, you know, try. we didn't want to sound slick, but we wanted to take advantage of like great equipment and great engineers. But um, in terms of the song writing, it was the goal was to write songs that would all translate by a campfire so unlike make up the breakdown like like if you played naked in the city again on an acoustic by a campfire it would just be it sounds so weird like you need, you need two acoustics to pull it off and like, even then it would just yeah. be like hmm so with elevator we we're like let's make songs that could be pulled off by a campfire um and still make our sound and so the, i think that's why you know, middle of no middle of nowhere, for example, is still played on the radio all the time. And the the concept with Happiness Limited was we had just done like tours with um, like Foo Fighters and Weezer, and we were doing lots of arena shows and big festival shows, and and like the Killers and stuff like that. And so we we're like, let's try and do something that will sound a bit bigger in scope, um, so that in an arena setting it would it would kind of make sense because like our kind of quirkier punk songs just didn't feel like they translated to big boomy spaces because there's just they were too jagged and there's too many notes and stuff and then the record after that future breeds we were like actually you know what we did for that last record fuck that um let's do let's do ex like let's just make a super punk weird quirky arty record i wanted to record it myself um and i just wanted to document that was the beginning of me wanting to document ideas in the demo songwriting stage because often the thorns of the rose would get worn off before you know by the time you record the final version and i was like i we wanted to do a record where all the thorns were left on the rose. Uh, did you say that Future Breeds was recorded in Tugboat? It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Basically, to pull that off, I had to go into Warner Brothers and and turn down doing another record with them. And we were just like, we went off the label. And I just, it was like the advance was going to be literally half a million. And I was turned it down. I was like, nope, I want to like teach myself starting now wow. to, to how to record and do the do a record the way i want to do it how did the rest of the band react to that <laughs> i'm surprised they were surprisingly chill it's which is weird to think about it the self-titled record let's do something that's closer to the approach we had on elevator um where it's there's songs that you could still technically probably play on an acoustic guitar um and it was closer back to like our love of just good songwriting um and less re less reliance on production tricks or or you know rebellion from the mainstream or anything it's like let's just write shit that we want to listen to yeah yeah, yeah. whereas like i think parker and i just we it's don't it's totally we, different bro yeah we don't we i don't. i no. it's it's the the records are it's totally different when you hear the record i think you're gonna be surprised it's really cool it's you like just whipped out bro <laughs> like you this must <laughs> really be bothering you <laughs> no it's totally different. it's just it's just more like I, I just I, I definitely think like the way that we approach songwriting, the way that we approach oh, yeah. recording things compositionally, it's like it's a really cool progression. Um, okay, this is what I'm gonna ask Chat GPT right now. Write me a lyric in the style of Parker Bosley. Oh, that's good. Do you feel like you'll use it to come up with ideas for songs in the future? I I used I used it yesterday when I was in a songwriting session with Hoxley from Mounties, um, and it was like total it, it, total crap. This it, first verse isn't bad. Okay, Parker Bosley, Chat GPT lyric: I'm walking through the city with a head full of dreams, 
but the weight of the world brings me down, down to, to my, my knees. knees. Oh, I like it. All the people, <laughs> pre-chorus, all the people rushing by seem to know just where to go, but I'm lost in the crowd and I don't know which way to go. He just rhymes to yeah, go. To that, go. Was, that was lazy. Chorus. So I'll just keep on walking till I find my way through the noise and the chaos to, to a, a brighter, brighter day. day. It's nice that it's hopeful. It starts out a little bit Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Yeah. One thing like in regards to AI that I've talked about and that I, I do feel is like we've been using AI for a while, like even synthesizers for what it's worth. Like when when but, we when but let me finish when we use like an arpeggiator and guess what it's going to sound like and mm -hmm. then kind of take that thing and use it. That is technically AI. And it's like, I think AI is cool for like graphic designers that I know who are like, can kind of input a basic idea and then like be like, oh, okay, that's a cool approach. And then they go and do their own thing. But chat GPT is whack. If I wanted to talk to a pathological liar, I'd talk to my dad. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my dad's great. I'm I kidding. think you're, but I feel like you're confusing AI with just just like a computer chip you know what i mean like ai is more that like it can adapt on the fly is the difference but i mean i'm not worried about like the world being taken over by a casio keyboard I'm but more... people people are freaking out about stuff like that and it's like well no like we've been using ai already is all but I'm trying yeah to say. i think it's just that it's a new chapter it's like it's like how um there's gps3 now like we've been using yeah. maps based on gps2 for years and yeah. that GPS three is like the next way smarter rendition. And so yeah. I think people are just tripping on this new version. I, I'm not tripping on it. I, I don't think the world's going to get taken over, but cool people will continue to make cool work using the technology that's available to them. Everyone's always worried about, about I, this is this, the concept of um, art and technology intertwining is, it's always been a debate, you know, like when trains were invented, people started painting landscapes. And when the the camera was invented, they stopped painting portraits. And people are like, oh, great. You just put it like all these portrait artists out of work. Yeah. It's like, it's like no, you adapt. Yeah. So you adapt and, and you keep making cool shit or you and, stop. And to be honest, like if kids are using chat uh, GPT to help them write essays, I think it'll force teachers to realize that there's so much of school is such bullshit. Like they should be teaching things that have way greater variables like emotional intelligence and like how do you validate another human being? How do you how do you develop a stronger sense of empathy? Um you know what I mean? Like there's just there's way there's stuff that computers can't teach you that it's probably more important to be taught in schools anyway mm -hmm. rather than go read a book on christopher columbus and like tell me about what you read in different wording you know right like, i would agree with that um but i i do think as uh, a species we are all gonna die within the next decade so <laughs> it's all good <laughs> You said that you're already working on the next album for the current yeah. album when do you expect it to release Bef definitely before the world ends don't worry <laughs> yeah okay good and when did you start working on the album like um, shortly after the last one came out yeah like there's there's bits and pieces that were written throughout like the last 10 years got these chunks of clay started over the course of 10 years but it was really only in the last year that we've yeah. really gone in and we're like okay here's a precision scalpel that I know is my main tool now. Mm. I can like do eyelashes now yeah. and you know. I prefer to work with dental floss to mm. cut the clay, but. Yeah, <laughs> that is your style. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the next one won't take another literal decade to come out. <laughs> no, no, I, no, no, I no. think you'll be getting the next record like in within a year and a half. Oh, wow. Lie Organ will be working with you on the next one as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just signed our contract officially two days ago, yep. and it's guaranteed two records. If we blow it, they'll be stoked that they only signed us for two records, and then yeah. if we kill it, then they'll be choked. So it's a stoked to choke situation. 
Yeah. If it comes out and it's a, like a massive success. I'll probably get into Coke, hard drugs at yeah. that point. <laughs> um, simply just because I think it's smart too. Like, yeah, from, I mean, from a business. I sense. think if historically, if you look at successful artists, <laughs> usually when they get success, they got hooked on drugs. So it makes sense that you should follow that blueprint. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll be like, I'll get hooked on spice. Oh, some spice. weird, like on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, spice like like from Dune. No, like you know, like the it's it's spice. like synthetic, um, synthetic weed that actually is oh. worse for you than meth, kind of thing. Oh, okay. that's cool. I thought you, you were meaning on... like cinnamon or something. Yeah, no, you no. should get hooked on Tim Heidecker's like vape juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get really into TikTok challenges for like a year straight. I'll just start putting out horrible content that has nothing <laughs> to do with the band, but I'll put it out on the fur trade TikTok. Oh yeah, I'd love that. If and then that, that that'll great. kind of push you into a new chapter of life, maybe. Yeah, just a downward spiral. Yeah. I'm also interested where the name Fur Trade came from. That is it's not a crazy story. It's just that my my grandpa was um he was a furrier. Uh he he made fur coats for a living in Ottawa, Canada. Um and growing up in Canada, the the fur trade was such a big part of uh, of Canadian history. Is that, like you study about the fur trade. It was kind of the economy of the early days of Canada was trading fur and stuff. Um, so that combined with fur being in my in my family's you know heritage, sort of, uh, it just popped in our head one day, and we we're like, sure, let's just go with that. But we're not by no means pro for fashion. Um, yeah, I was trying to figure out if you had a particular stance on <laughs> the fur trade with it. Yeah, we're actually, the weird thing is we are, we would be actually anti fur trade. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not pro fur trade, but it's more a reference to like the, the just like the olden days of Canada, really. Yeah, golden days, baby. The <laughs> golden days. I was <laughs> just saying that it's it is kind of weird, actually, kind of think of it that we're actually anti fur trade. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about the fur trade. It's like a thing that happened in in the country that's nuanced and has. It's like it's so dense and was like such a crazy, massive, formative time in our country. Mm -hmm. That it's like, you can't say that you're against the fur trade. It's like necessarily because it's like it, it, it's more what you're saying is like you're against fur being worn by people. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, but I mean, I just mean like there technically probably is still what would be considered a fur trade maybe, but not right, really. Right. I mean, there's fur use in fashion, which we're absolutely not fans of, um, mm -hmm. But when I think of the fur trade, I just think of early Canadian history that was taught in yeah. schools when we were growing up. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to make you make a political statement or anything. Sometimes band names are like tattoos. It's just like, what's the meaning behind it? I don't know. It's just cool. Like, can I like stuff that's just okay. cool? Yeah, like, man. does everything have to like be traced back to like my ancestors? Like, yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> And you've you've both played in quite a few bands. You're in the gay nineties, um, Parker. It, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely, <laughs> Which is also a reference to a that's period. A, that's a reference yeah. to a period as well. And yeah. it's like I'm not for or against the gay nineties. They happened, <laughs> yeah. and I decided to use that name. Um, Homophobe. As, as, <clears throat> oh yeah, right. <laughs> Just but, but but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, gay, bad joke, bad joke. gay gay nineties was was great, and I I actually I I loved that name because it it prompted so much discussion and like people like so what's the deal and it's like well let me educate you for a minute it yeah. was and it was actually a legitimately cool period for fashion too it was a cool time and it was a cool era and it was a cool name and it was a cool band if anybody's watching this who hasn't heard of gay 90s um 
our liberal guilt record is is pretty cool you should listen to it too i'm just also interested in what you guys listen to currently um, oh yeah i i've been listening to yumi matsutoya that was she was an influence on on the fur trade record Oh, China Crisis is is a big band lately for me that I've just discovered. They Walter Becker from Steely Dan produced a record for them, and uh, like back in the day in like the eighties. And China Crisis, they're they're really cool. I've been doing a deep dive on songs like songs that are played a lot on TikTok because my gal loves TikTok, and I'm just like, who are like I don't know most of these artists, right? So I've been like just diving into like who's May Stevens, like who's um yeah, like there's so many artists that just now have 11 million followers on Spotify that I've just never heard of, and that's kind of great. That's like actually like the fur trade dynamic. It's like yeah. I'm like, hey, I really like this like weird composer from the 70s who was Morricone's attorney. Check out this violin thing. We should sample it. And then you're like listening to TikTok stuff and like figuring out what the future actually sounds like. I'm um, just like listening to Post Malone and going like, like, how can we, how can we use like the sound of like the pads in the background of this verse? Um, but then put like live drums over it instead or. Right. Yeah. I like, I like combining, um, modern production sneaky tricks with, um just more like just kind of indie rock sounds so before we close off i just want to ask you guys if you have any unsolicited advice for anyone listening or a little piece of wisdom don't eat three within three hours of going on stage oh that's a good one <laughs> unless it's a couple tortilla chips okay yeah and like a spoonful of hummus uh, take everything as a compliment no matter what it is that served me well when you wake up look at your phone as quickly as possible and check all your texts and emails like terrible. before you've <laughs> yeah <laughs> See, that was a, no, you I, Scott no I intentionally phrased it that way because just when you say it that way it sounds ridiculous like that's obviously a horrible idea your vibe will be shot um but yet so many people do do that so so don't do that I, I wake up i do a wordle yeah do you really i do a wordle and then i read the news that's what bums me out though is waking up and reading the news okay but I shouldn't you, be reading the you news. that that's why you got to use google news because your algorithm is based on how stoked you are on like what what things you click on and what things like oh, you really? hover over the longest so it just gives you only stuff you're interested in. I get Google to tell me the news um, when I'm in the shower, if I'm not listening to music, um, but I'll specify like what kind of news. Like, I, I only want to get Tintin news. Yeah, is news about- Is there a new is there Ratatouille a new... coming out in 2024? Is Will Shrek make a comeback culturally? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> culturally. <laughs> um, who will they cast if they were right. to- Right, who's playing Shrek in the new Vin Diesel? Fast and the Furious, Shrek. How do I get? How do I get a fur trade song in Succession season four? Like right. That, don't do a two-hour interview with Chris from Australia. <laughs> that would be my top. Tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great, man. Thank you so much for everything. Where would you like people to find you? I guess on, 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 on a on yacht. New TikTok. Account. I hope that they find me on a yacht. Yeah. Um, retired early yeah semi-nude completely unsolicited oh yeah i will just i'll just be on a yacht cruising my other boats <laughs> just naked just giving advice <laughs> giving advice yeah uh you can find us on instagram on a TikTok that's coming soon I, yeah it's we're gonna do a discord too which i think will be fun once... i think i'm gonna like discord yeah oh, wow. once like it, we actually kind of build some momentum and you know have more to say other than music's coming soon i swear yeah but mainly right now i think instagram is sort of our most comfortable online space so mm -hmm. awesome yeah i would say 
dust off your old Instagram account and come on by. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just remind everyone that LOL Trash is out now on all streaming services and to keep an eye out for the album that's coming soon. Uh, you'll see Parker and Steve's social platforms linked and uh, where to check out the rest of their music and side projects. Thanks for watching and thank you very much for joining me, guys. And thanks for Drew for putting me in touch with you. And uh... Good luck. Stand out of your underwear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Thanks, Chris. All right, peace out. Bye. Thanks for checking out this video interview. Again, I'll remind everyone that Dark Celebration is out on all streaming services now. This album is crazy, and these guys are absolute masters with their music videos. Make It to the Morning is my personal favorite. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.